Okay, what I want to talk about is a bio water filter, a bio water filtration system. Now, uh, have you ever been to a place where there's a natural spring that comes out the side of a hill? Uh, and the, it, generally they come out of sand. Uh, they might be on the side of the road. There might be people come there to get their water. Uh, and they might put buckets down and, and collect the water and take it home, drink it. And they might have been coming there for years because these natural springs are all over the country. Uh, here, there, and everywhere dotted here, there, and everywhere. Uh, and they've been there for years. And uh, especially here in North America. I don't know. Maybe they don't have this sort of thing out in other countries. But here in North America, we have natural springs. And people are used to going to these springs a lot of times to get water, fresh water. Now, there's a difference between, there's two different types of water. You do not want to drink what's called surface water. That's water that forms in mud puddles or is near the surface of the ground. That water is generally contaminated. Now, not even the water in a stream might not be good. Maybe in the old days, maybe in the 1800s, you could drink water from a stream. But now, not necessarily so. So, what we're talking about here is the difference between groundwater and surface water. Surface water is this water that's near the surface of the ground, and you don't want to drink it. How surface water becomes groundwater, and that's what happens. Surface water becomes groundwater. And how that process happens is the surface water runs down through, in, through the soil... And it goes down and it goes through layers of bedrock and it goes through layers of sand. And when it comes out, it comes out through the spring, it changes. It changes from surface water into groundwater. And groundwater is generally safe to drink. Uh, it's generally the impurities have been strained out of the water as it goes through the ground. And it's a natural process. Gravity is what causes that process to, to function as the, earth, as the water moves through the earth. So you can actually simulate that process and make your own water filter on your own water filtration system that simulates the process that happens naturally in the earth. This is the best kind of filter. This kind of filter is much better than those little charcoal filters you buy that plug up. Now, if we get a some sort of a crisis, heaven forbid, but if we get some sort of a crisis... When your little charcoal filters that are this big that you save for yourself for the crisis fill up full of sludge or whatever after you've used them for a few months, a month or something, or two months, what are you going to do? You can't go to the hardware store and get more. What are you going to do? You're stuck then. So, this type of system I'm talking about, though, can filter thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons because it's simulating what the earth does. And now I'm going to discuss this in detail right now. Uh, I had a video a little while ago posted about what to do in a shift. And I covered an awful lot of topics in that video. And so I didn't get to go into detail about the water filtration system. And actually the best way to build one. Now there's two methods. You can use pipes. A lot of people are going to have pipes. And that's all they're going to have to use. But if you put away ahead of time. Before the shift happens, if, if the shift ever happens, but if you put away ahead of time some of these plastic five-gallon pails, generally they're white-colored, you know, and generally uh, different things come in them. Sometimes paint comes in them. But if you're going to use one that's got paint in it, you got to really clean it out good and make sure it's latex. And you got to clean it out awfully well. I mean, you really got to clean it. But uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use that unless it was an emergency. I wouldn't use one that had latex in it. Uh, unless, it was, unless you were in the shift and you didn't have nothing else. You're best off buying maybe a brand new one that's never been used before. And then smell it and make sure there hasn't been anything in it. Nobody has put any gasoline in it or anything like that. Smell it good and make sure that it's really good and clean. And then wash it scrub it with, uh, with detergent cleanser before you use it and rinse it out a few times. So there what you need you're gonna need is four of those with lids on them. And what you do is you get a little plumber's fitting that goes between each one. 
with about a coupling that you can screw on and you can tighten up and you can put a, a little gasket in there between each one so that they're all interconnected with this one pipe that flows up through the center. You see what I mean? Now, the first one on the top, it's full of gravel. And the water's going to go through it rather quickly, but it's going to stop some stuff. That's the first, that's the pre-filter. Then the next one down is sand. Now, you want coarse sand for the next one down. You want a coarse grade of sand. Now, the next one down, the third one down, it's a finer grade of sand. You want fine sand in that. And the next one down, you want charcoal. You want full charcoal. And it's good to have another one below that if you've got a high enough ceiling. If you've got a 10-foot ceiling in your house, you can put one more below that. It's another one full of charcoal. So you have two full of charcoal. But if you only got an 8-foot ceiling, you're going to have to stop with just one full of charcoal. Because you got to have enough room up top to get your water in the top. And you leave your gravel down about this far. You don't bring your gravel right up to the top. You leave your gravel down about this far, a little ways down. Maybe, oh, I don't know, you probably get away with about this much down from the top. And you climb up a step ladder and you pour five gallons of water up in there. And that starts filtering down through. And it'll go through the gravel rather quickly. And then the layers of sand, it takes longer. And it'll make a gurgling sound as the water's going down through this apparatus. And it comes out a spigot in the bottom. And you collect it when it comes out the spigot in the bottom. And you put it in a pail. And then what you do is you can climb back up and pour that in again. And you can filter it several times. And now, how much water are you going to need? And in, in, if you've got a, your disaster... Now, this, see, this is for drinking water. You're not going to use this water for, uh, uh, for, your, uh, for water in your vegetables in your garden. You're not going to use it for flushing the toilet. It's too much work to get your... This is for your drinking water. And when you run it through this filter about three or four times, then you boil it, and then you drink it. Now, you got your drinking water. Now, here's the thing. Here's a ticket. When you first put this device together, you put all your fittings together and you put all the, all the sand and the charcoal and everything else in this device and you create it and you've made it and you got it ready for work. It doesn't leak or anything. It's working good, right? You don't drink that first water that comes out of the thing. You run the water through it a few times. This is the same thing you do like when you buy a new pot from the store. You buy yourself a new frying pan or something like that. You go to the store, you buy yourself a new frying pan. You never put that thing on the stove, put your water in it, and, and, and cook your meal in it and eat that meal. You never do it that way. What you do is you always pour a, a half a gallon of water or something in the frying pan. You cook that water, and then you dump that water out. Right? That's I call that seasoning. You're seasoning the frying pan. Then the next one, then you can eat what comes out of it next time. And that's the way with this apparatus. When you first build it, you got to run water through it first. Don't drink that water. Throw it out. Then the next time, then you can start to use it. And then smell the water first to make sure there isn't anything in the in the in the in it. There wasn't anything in it to make sure it was it smells good and it smells fresh. And then boil it, and then you can drink it. Now, see how much drinking water are you actually going to need? You're probably only going to need really about a half a gallon a day. So if you do five gallons, you've just made yourself enough to last you a full ten days in the crisis. And that's what this machine is for. This machine is for the crisis. And so what you do is, you get the ingredients you need to make this machine. Everything you need to make it. And you put it away in your, in your linen closet, or your closet. And you forget about it. Until the crisis comes. And then you got everything you need there. You got your charcoal, you got everything. And if you live out in the country, good for you, because you can make your own charcoal. And I'll tell you how to make charcoal. What you do is, you, you start up a fire and you get maple. That's the wood you get, you get maple. Make sure it's maple. Start up your fire in your wood stove, right? And get your maple in there. And you, what you do is, is try to snuff your fire out before your fire is completed. Uh, before it's completely burned the coals down to the ashes. Try to snuff your fire out. Now, don't go... Don't go... Uh, uh, 
I was throwing a whole bunch of water on top of your stove. You'll crack your stove. If your stove is red hot, you throw a bunch of water on top. You hear an awful hissing sound. You hear a bang sound. You've just cracked your stove. Especially if your stove's got a glass door on it. You can really make a mess that way, trying to throw water on it. But there, there's ways you can slow your fire down so that you can snuff your fire out before it's completely burned down to, and burned all your coals up. And uh, if, you, if you think about it, you know ways that you can actually do that so you don't hurt your stove and you can actually make the charcoal. Now, if you're outdoors uh, and you got a big yard and you're in the country or something and you got a barbecue pit or something like that, it's even better. Then you can use water to cool your charcoal down before it's completely burned itself out. And when you get these lumps, you'll get these lumps of coal. They're about this big out of maple. And they're made of they're maple and they've been like three quarters burned. And they're, they, that is like gold. That, that. And you can make that yourself. And that's what you put in those buckets. And that char, those lumps of charcoal will filter... Endless amounts of water if you fill a whole bucket full of charcoal. Well, picture those little filters you buy. You're only getting like a little tiny little bit of charcoal in them, and they're only about this big. You got a whole five-gallon pail of that stuff. It's going to last a lot longer. It's going to last a hundred times longer than your charcoal filter you've bought. And it's not going to plug up as quick. And it will eventually, it would get plugged. But you know how many thousand gallons you'll be able to do before it gets plugged? You'll be able to do like 100,000 gallons or something. And so it'll last you the whole, the whole crisis, whatever the crisis is. So I hope you enjoyed listening and uh, much success. Uh, like and subscribe and we will see you in the next article.